well, after seeing this. So now let me just quickly tell you that what is uh, I am trying to. So this is the self correlation function r at t plus tau. This is equal to from r minus l with a jump. It is coming to r in with a probability of jump length l at the with a time scale tau, which is the residence time at the site. So physically, it is easy to understand. It is sitting at a site. It can jump from here to that site. So this jump length, if it is l, then from r minus l, it comes to r in a time t plus tau, when p l tau is the jump length for a residence time of tau. So it sits here. After some time, it jumps. After some time, it again jumps. After some time, it again jumps. So there is a residence time and there is a jump length. So jump length probability given by L dependence also on the time tau. And when these are small quantities, because they are talking about a medium in which a particle is diffusing through short jumps and at short time scales, I can do a Taylor expansion of this in time and in space. So this is in time. On the right hand side, this is in space. Now here, GS of RT can be taken outside in this expression because uh, there is no PL tau involved in this term. So once I take it out and we know that PL tau once we integrate over all jump lengths it has to be equal to 1. At least the particle jumps with any length. So PL tau DL is equal to 1 if it is only PL tau DL. So this goes outside the so I can write down gs t plus tau equal to gs it's a self always self phenomenon rt plus tau dgs by dt and then, then it is uh, dgs by dt and then dt and I can do this Taylor expansion of the whole thing. So you can see that one is this uh, one is this in time tau this is the next will be tau square d2 t by dt2 gs rt and so on and so forth and the right hand side I do it same on space this gs rt minus l into delta gs plus half of li lj like lx lx ly the components of jump length in x y and z direction the second order derivative first order derivative and these two i am equating now when i equate one thing is there this l into dgs by dx this term now l has equal chance of being positive or negative. So just L tau, if I do this over the entire space, just for dx, same true for dy and dz, if I do this integration, it should give me 0. Because this is first order in L, and then Lx, Ly, Lz can be positive and negative with equal probability when summing up over all of them, <coughs> they become 0. So that means this term L into delta gs rt, I wrote dgs by dx, but now there will be uh, lx dgx by dgs by dx, ly dgs by dy, so on and so forth, and then there is a second order term. This term goes to 0 because L is isotropic. So integral of PL tower space is unity, and the first term in both the sides are equal. So gs and gs they will cancel and what I get is this equation here. So after neglecting the higher order terms we get this equation and then because as I said that PL tau is isotropic so Li square means Lx square Lx square P Lx tau dx dy dz and then there will be Lx square plus Ly square plus lz square and then you can see because they are isotropic this gives me nothing but an average 
L i square which is L x square plus L i square plus L z square average and one third of that. Any time this is one third because all three components equally possible and then I get this equation. This equation is a equation for motion that is dictated by the self correlation function of a particle. In, if I write it actually in slightly simpler form in one dimension then you will realize this is dgs xt dt equal to let me write a constant as d because fixed second law says excuse me I am mixing up space and time so dc by dt equal to d d to c by dx2 for a one dimensional diffusion and this is for three dimensional diffusion so the c and g is they are identical so i can use the solution of fixed diffusion equation and use it here for gs of rt so here so now the solution of the fixed law also must satisfy some very basic constants one is that at t equal to 0 the self correlation function is delta r because we know that at t equal to 0 it is starting from some point which we are calling at origin. This origin is not fixed it can be anywhere in the medium but this is delta function for this particular particle and gs of rt means at any time if I integrate over the whole space dr is basically d3r. <coughs> <coughs> d3r so integration over the whole space is equal to 1 because the physical significance of this is that the particle has to be somewhere at that time t and that's why gs of rt integrated over all the space is equal to 1 so these are the things which the fixed law must satisfy in its solution and the solution we are aware that for a diffusing particle for a diffusing particle at any time t starting if the particle is here this is a Gaussian the Gaussian has a width at any time which is 4 dt so if the particle starts from the origin at time t equal to 0 as time goes on this is t equal to 0 uh, it, is, it opens up like a Gaussian widens like a Gaussian with a width of 4 dt. So that means uh, one is that if I can measure at some time the width then I can find out d and if I go to infinity then this becomes broader and broader and actually ultimately the particle is uniformly dis distributed all over the space. So this is the significance of this solution of uh, fixed equation which also I am using as gs of rt because by taking a Fourier transform over space of this function I can get the intermediate scattering law and which will be actually I am telling you it goes as e to the power minus d q square t so so now that I mention you it is easy to do a Fourier transform of this and uh, then the Fourier transform of this over r gives me e to the power minus d q square t and once more if I do the Fourier transform of this exponential function this is an exponential function uh, and what I will get is a Lorentzian so this is the Lorentzian which I mentioned again and again that uh, here when I showed that the due to diffusion the particle has a Lorentzian distribution in omega this is the Lorentzian I am talking about this is the Lorentzian I am talking about. So this Lorentzian you can see the width dq square can be used to determine the d values given that we know the q values for the experiment. So this is the Lorentzian which we will be measuring in our experiments. And if the particle is diffusing in an infinite medium then you only have this Lorentzian but if it is diffusing in a finite medium then I will also have a plus one delta omega term and a elastic incoherent structure factor which tells me the geometry of the space 
in which the particle is diffusing. So this is for an infinite medium, this is for a finite medium and I will show you how to derive AQ for a finite medium. So now this is what I stated just now. The scattering exhibits the shape of a Lorentzian function whose half width or full width whatever you want to say with half width at half maxima increases with the momentum transfer Q according to a dq square law. This also often you will find I will write it as 1 by tau or where tau is the residence time. I can quickly do a dimension analysis you can say d is given in centimeter square per second and q is centimeter inverse square. So what I get d here d q square is centimeter square per second into centimeter inverse square is per second which is 1 upon time. And here I can also write the whole thing as 1 by tau square where 1 by tau, tau is given as a residence time. So we will be talking interchangeably about dq square and 1 by tau and these two are equivalent unit wise and physically also because dq square dictates how fast it is diffusing which will also depend if there is a residence time at every site. So it is a Lorentzian but the Take away from this expression is that if I do the experiment, if I can measure the width of the energy transfer peak which is a Lorentzian then from there I can find out the diffusion constant which is a very important factor or an important physical quantity for understanding dynamics, especially self dynamics in various media. So let me just uh, give you an example. Now I just now I talked about diffusion, Fickian diffusion, but now let me just take an example which is a twofold jump rotation. Let me just uh, explain to you. Suppose there are two sides, two sides. So it can be an H2 molecule, it can be an H2 molecule, and which may be rotating in a medium not able to move. So it's just rotation I'm talking about. So this hydrogen goes from site 1 to site 2, site 2 to site 1. So basically in brief, uh, I am talking about a two-fold jump rotation. So it is changing site as I showed you. The particle goes from one site, H2 of course it is not right because there are two particles. I am talking about a single particle and there are two sites and the particle will go from this side to this side and this side to this side it is jumping. So if I write down the residence time as tau at a site then I can write a very simple loss and gain equation. Let us say it started with the site R1. Let me call it this is the site R1. This is the site R2. 1 and 2. So the change in probability of being at site R1. One is that this is like radioactive decay. If the residence time is tau it's, then it is a statistical fact. fact fact that probability minus p r1 tau by tau will tell me after tau time what is the probability that it has leaked out or gone to the other side and this is the loss term and the gain term is if the particle was at second side what is the probability that it has leaked into this side so this is the gain so basically it is gain minus loss gives me the particle the probability that particle at R1T and its rate of change with time the probability. Similarly I can write the same thing for the second side R2T DT where the loss term now it is that it is the particle is lost from second side to first side and there is the gain term which is coming from to first side to second side. If I add up these two equations we get a very obvious result that P R1 T plus P R2 T equal to a constant. Actually this constant should be 1 because it should be either here or there at a time t. So together they should be 1. But here from these two equations when I add up D P R1 T D T plus D P R2 T D T equal to 0 gives me a constant. I can solve it but uh, this is a very simple first order equation to solve this but I just give you the solutions 
so this is basically two constants a and b have to be determined for this solution and this is the time variable and how the probability is changing with that so this i can straight away convert into first solutions because at t equal to 0 p r1 t is a plus b and this is a minus b so a plus b it can be equal to 1 if the particle starts from site 1 and then a minus b should be equal to 0 putting t equal to 0 because it was so now if I at time t equal to 0 if I solve these two I get straight away this solution p11 and p12 that is the two probabilities one is that it was at site 1 and what is the probability it continues at uh, site 1 up so site 1 at time t equal to 0 what is the probability it continues same for the other side now using these probabilities I can write down this intermediate scattering function which has got a time dependent part and a time independent part this is the EISF part because here the jump from the between the sides are stochastic stochastic and the time variation is given by this part but the fact is that because it is a finite size we also have something called a elastic incoherent structure factor which has got a q dependence like this I have specifically write down the q dependence for a0 q and a1 q q dependent this is the prefactor of the time dependent part and this is the prefactor if I want I can put a delta omega here so when I take a Fourier transform this will give me the elastic line elastic line broadened by the instrumental resolution this will give me the Lorentzian line broadened by the instrumental resolution and the prefactor A1Q so this is true for a two side two side diffusion jump diffusion between two sides and often that happens in many of our problems so as I said that so IQT gives us A0Q which is this the Q dependence for the elastic incoherent structure factor and the other part gives me a Lorentzian or uh, if you see the previous expression I wrote DQ square whole square and this is omega square tau square so they are very very similar in nature so this is a Lorentzian distribution so this Lorentzian time distribution can give me the jump times tau but this part A0Q its variation with Q tells me what is the nature of the jump or the geometry not nature really what is the geometry of this jump here it is twofold it can be even three points it can be even three points so the particle may be jumping between these points or it can be even a six fold jump where the particle is jumping between six sides or the particle may be diffusing over a circle and all these can be we can make similar equations this is very simple here I took half of this in case of three points I will have three terms and two will be the gain terms one will be the loss term when the particle starts from here and here and here and one can easily solve I have taken one example I will give the other results so now let us uh, just uh, write down it for a powder sample in case of so far I have kept uh, calculating s q omega now only difference is that in case of powder sample we have to take all possible orientations of q and that is uh, you can see that it is uh, sin theta d theta d phi uh, actually here this d phi won't be there it is here uh, sin theta d theta d phi will give you the orientational average of s q omega and then what we get is this uh, this is the elastic incoherent structure factor and this is the natural Lorentzian where the prefactor the q dependent prefactor of EISF which comes from the geometry of rotation is given by these expressions these are Bessel functions of 0th order 
which are basically sin x by x, zeroth order spherical Bessel function. So with this, once we do an experiment, we can measure the Lorentzian, and we can also measure a zero q or a zero prime q for a powder sample as a function of q, and get the kind of rotation geometry that is there in the system. So just a, a pictorial demonstration that we can have two-fold jump rotation, we can have uniaxial continuous rotational diffusion, we can have three-fold jump diffusion, and so an isotropic rotational diffusion means it is this, this axis is not fixed, this axis can be anything, and then it can have a rotational diffusion over a sphere. Here it will be over a circle, here it will be over a sphere. So these are the possible situations, but the possible physical constraints over which a molecule can diffuse. So now let me just give you the expression for elastic incoherent structure factors. So for jump rotation as I told you earlier, two-fold, three-fold, six-fold, these are the expressions. So this is for a two-fold like actually derived it for you. For three-fold it will be extended to this expression and for six-fold. <coughs> <coughs> for isotropic rotational diffusion, it is J0 square QR, where R is the radius of rotation and J0 is the spherical Bessel function of 0th order. And so this schematic shows you that ah, what will be the variation of EISF with respect to Q for a two-fold, three-fold and six-fold and continuous jump diffusion rotational diffusion and by measurement of EISF we can select or we can see which one of these models are valid for a molecule like say some organic molecule which is undergoing a rotational diffusion. So we are not only talking about a translational diffusion, we are not only talking about translation but we are also talking about rotation. And we are introducing a term called rotational diffusion because if there are three sides, just like translational diffusion, the particle can, can come from here to here, go back there, or from here to here, or from here to here. So they can undergo jump diffusion between these three sides.